What's up, shitbirds? <laughs> Hello, everyone. We're going to do a basic cycle analyst 3.14 uh, video introducing um, how to interface with the device, how to use it, uh, the basic screens uh, on the display, uh, as well as how to set up uh, a single parameter, change the setting, etc. This is meant to just be a quick overview of the device and, uh, and not meant to be a specific setup video. So uh, I've got a little test set up here with uh, Cycle Analyst 3.14 with an MF switch, as well as a throttle, a pedal assist sensor, battery, and a motor. And uh, it's fully functional, so I can run the motor, I can change settings, all this stuff. To get started, let's look at the first thing you'd see when you turn the Cycle Analyst on, either by the MF switch, or if you don't have one with an MF switch, when you turn the battery on, it will turn on as well. But uh, Right here, the cycle analyst boots up and it tells you the version of the device that uh, the firmware is programmed to right now. This is the screen that you see right when you turn the device on. So it's a basic screen here. It has uh, battery voltage, distance, your speed, your power, uh, and it has two little icons over in the corner here that represent a few different things. The one on the far left here is actually a throttle indicator. So when I turn the throttle, you'll see a little bar move up and down on that graph to give you a visual indication of what level of throttle you're at. The second little dot here is actually a pedal assist. This little bar will move if I had a torque sensor and it would show my human watts. When you apply the e-brake, you see this the throttle indicator switch to an actual closing and opening brake lever. As you can see, when I apply the throttle, we see a little bit of power from the motor. We see that the speed of the motor is displayed, and we see um, the throttle uh, move up to this high, high, higher position on the, on the bar graph. Let's just go through all the screens at the beginning here. Um, so this is the main screen, as I mentioned before. If I scroll through to the right, I'll get a display that shows the electrical characteristics, voltage, power, current and the accumulated amp hours so far. The next screen is, is kind of like a human power uh, indicator. It gives you another uh, basic voltage of the battery, the current you're drawing, um, the speed of the vehicle, uh, human watts if you had a torque sensor, and then the RPM of the pedal sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and spin the cranks and you should see here on the screen that the RPM is now showing, and it's showing have a very small amount of human watts because there's a little bit of offset in the, in the pedal sensor. Keeping forwards, I have the watt hours, which is the total energy that the battery is used for this trip, and then the watt hours per kilometer. Uh, the watt hours per kilometer is actually a very interesting um, metric, and that actually lets you know how efficient your vehicle is being. Uh, so it says, you know, as it is watt hours per kilometer, it's how many watt hours you would use to travel a kilometer. Um, typical e-bikes are using around 10 for someone that's going relatively quickly. Um, and the uh, systems that are much higher power could use you know, 20 to 30 watt hours per kilometer. Or if you're a very you know, conservative rider, you could use you know, two or three. It really depends how you use your vehicle, but this gives you an indication of how much energy you're using per distance. Um, this next screen here is a human watt hour screen. It shows you kind of the accumulated statistics. If we had a torque sensor that was set up, uh, you'd see uh, a value here that's positive. Um, you'd see the average human watt hours that you've put in, uh, and you'd just see your kind of average RPM over your trip. The regen uh, page only really shows <laughs> any regen values if you have a direct drive motor. In my setup here, this is a geared motor, so there's no regen available but this gives you uh, an accumulated amount of regen that you've recovered uh, in your trip. And it, you know, this, this percentage number actually indicates the extra range you would have gotten or you did get from using regen. Um, so it compares your forward amp hour relative to your regen amp hour and gives you how much extra range you've gotten. Uh, you can kind of expect in the city to get 10 to 15% regen with a powerful uh, regenerative braking system like on a phase runner. Uh, the next screen here is your kind of peak statistics for the voltage and current. So the maximum um, current that you've drawn from the battery and positive, and then the A min would be your regen peak current. Uh, v min is how low the battery has gotten in, in your trip. So this can be useful if you're BMS trips. You can see kind of how low it goes before the system shuts off. Um, 
next screen we have your accumulated kind of range and trip statistics. So maximum speed, your average speed, and the total amount of time on the trip. Uh, if you have a temperature sensor in your motor, this would show you what the temperature is uh, instantaneously, the maximum temperature over the trip, as well as the average temperature on the trip. Uh, and then we have a kind of basic uh, trip distance screen, shows you how far the trip is. And uh, your total kilometers actually uh, represents how far the cycle analyst has gone in, in total. This is actually a relatively new cycle analyst, so the trip and the total are right now currently matched. So as you use this device, you'd see this total kilometer keep getting bigger and bigger, but your trip reset um, would have to, you know, kind of be per trip. One thing I will note is that this trip kilometer will cap out at 999 kilometers. So you have to reset your trip. Um, we are now also have a battery statistics page. It, it tells you the uh, kind of averaged uh, resistance of your battery in ohms. So this battery is, you know, 400 and, uh, sorry, 42 milli ohms. Um, and then the total uh, number of cycles. So each time you do a trip reset over a certain threshold, it will increase that cycle count. Um, the total kilowatt hours is the kind of total energy you've used on the cycle analyst as a whole. Uh, the last screen, which is actually quite important, is a very useful screen, is the diagnostic screen. Uh, it shows the, the throttle in, the throttle out, and has uh, these characters in the bottom corner of the screen that represent limits. If the letters are capitalized, it means the limit is active. Uh, we have a voltage, we have a current, and then a speed in the corner here. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to apply some throttle. And you should see the in start to go up and the out correspondingly go up. Right now, there's no limits present and the speed is 10 kilometers an hour. There's not much current showing because the system is not traveling you know, kind of fast enough and there's no load on it. Um, if I go ahead and I'll put some load on the system, get some current there. So uh, if I press the right button again, I'll go back to the main screen. Uh, it should be noted that you can navigate left or right with the buttons. So if I wanted to go back to the diagnostic screen right away, I just press the left button once. So that's a general overview of all of the, uh, the display screens. You can set these up uh, in the software suite to just turn off a screen if you'd like. So if you don't need a screen to show up, you can just turn that off. Um, next thing we should do is just go into the setup menu itself. So uh, CA has two buttons. The left button here, if I press and hold that, it'll allow us to enter the setup. So I'm just going to press and hold it. The screen here has changed. Now it says enter setup menu. I just release the button and now we're in the setup menu. Important things to know in the setup menu is that there's two indicators on the side of the screen here that tell you uh, which way to navigate on the device. So a vertical line here on the side means that if you press the left button, you'll exit the setup menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll press the left button once, and I'll leave the setup menu. So the, as I was talking about before, the bar lets you leave the setup menu, and the arrow uh, lets you know that there's more information to the right. So let's go to the right, and we're going to change the voltage of the battery. So say you've got your e-bike system, and you've upgraded your battery. You want to change the voltage that the cycle analyst is displaying and working on. Um, you don't need to do this. What it does do is it tell the cycle analyst um, to, to display the uh, little battery indicator a bit better. So I'm going to go into this setup menu by pressing and holding the right button. You'll see that the screen changes to OK. At that point, I can release the button. Now I'm in a new submenu. So in the submenus, the display to let you know which direction you can go and which way there's information is switched to only the right side of the screen. There's now a bar on the left, so if I press the left button, I will exit out of the submenu. There's an arrow to the right, so I can go to the right, and there's more information. So we're going to reprogram this to be a 52-volt battery instead of a 36-volt uh, battery. So I'm going to go in here, and here is the string number of my battery. So 10 cells in series is 36 volts, and 14 cells in series is 52. So we're going to change this 10 to 14. So I'm going to press and hold the right button to enter that submenu. The indicator here says OK, I can release. And now we note that the first digit, the 1, is flashing. So I can change that value up and down with these two arrows. I want to set this to 14, so I'm going to leave it at 1. And again, I will press and hold the right button 
to move to the next one. So now that the uh, zero is highlighted, I'm gonna change that to a four. So I'll tell the cycle analyst I have a 52 volt battery and I'll press and hold the OK button to set that into memory. So now we can see that there's 14 cells and I've programmed that. And if that's the last thing I need to do, I can just press and hold the left button. It says exit, I'm out of the setup. Um, what I'm gonna do quickly is I'll just go back and change that again, because we wanna have our display. Um, so I'm gonna quickly review this, get into the setup menu, scroll over to the right to get set up battery, press and hold the right button to get into the setup of the battery. Now I'm gonna scroll over to the right until I get to the string number, change that value back to 10, press and hold, change this down to zero. If I want, I can always go up and down. So say it's at 18 and I wanna to go to 10, I can just go up, past nine, go to zero. Um, if, for example, I made an error and I is actually a 20S battery, you can also press and exit to the left by pressing holding the left button. So now I'm gonna change the one digit again, go up and down, and I'm gonna get out of here because I want it to be a 10 series battery. So that's the kind of uh, how you get around the setup menu. Um, in here, you can see that there's left and right arrows. Uh, so I'm gonna keep going. Now you see that if I press the right button again, I'm gonna exit the battery submenu. Let's do that. So now I can just keep going all the way through the setup menu. And you'll see this right button now turn to a bar. So I can exit that way, or at any point in the setup menu, I can press and hold the left button to exit. Um, so that's the kind of basic setup menu um, interface. One uh, last thing we want to talk about is um, the uh, trip reset for the buttons on the device here. So um, your main screen here shows you kind of a, a scrolling uh, changeover of your trip distance, your accumulated amp hours. If you had a temperature sensor, it would also show the temperature sensor there. So what I'm gonna do is I've gone home and I've done my ride for the day and I recharged my battery. And so I wanna tell the cycle analyst to reset. So it's very simple, you just press and hold the right button. The screen will ask if you wanna reset the trip. You say yes, boom. Now your accumulated statistics for your trip are reset. So with the introduction of the MF switch, it's also important to talk about how that works with the cycle analyst. What we have designed into this product is a couple different digital buttons to let you interface with cycle analyst, as well as a clever analog circuit to let us turn on and off the phase runner and base runner controllers remotely from the handlebar. So the orange button on the top of the device lets you turn on and off the cycle analyst as well as the motor controller. So I'm gonna compress that. You see the cycle analyst boots up again. Um, this fully shuts the system down and it uses very, very little um, energy to, to maintain that state. It's you know in the microamps. So the other buttons on the device are an up and down button you can tell the cycle analyst what you want those to do. Right now I have it configured to be um, uh, a total power on the cycle analyst. So if I press the down button, I can see this little pop-up screen change and it's showing me that there's zero watts here. I'm gonna turn it up, 50 watts, 100 watts, 150 watts. You can adjust all these settings in the setup menu. The last button up here is the M button and that actually changes the screen on the cycle analyst for you. So it's in parallel with the right button here. So I can scroll through all the screens, etc. One of the settings in the cycle analyst is actually automatically returned to the home screen after a couple of seconds. So you can set that up if you'd like. So you can kind of browse through a screen, check some statistic while you're riding, and then let the cycle analyst return back to the home screen. Um, that's not enabled on this device right now, but so let's go back to the main page. Um, I can also use that M button. If I press and hold it, I can do a reset. So it allows me to reset the trip remotely without having to take my hands off the controls of the bike. So that kind of concludes the basic uh, introduction for the CA. Uh, this video is only really meant to talk about how to interface with the device as it's on the bike. Uh, we have other videos that show you how to program the device using software. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can send us an email or uh, put a comment on the YouTube video here and we'll try and get back to you. Like that. <laughs>